Greetings, everyone. My name is Yarlik, and welcome to a new tool-assisted speedrun. This one in the category of Happy Couple. Our goal here today is to get Nail 4 from the Nailsmith, and then talk to Shio. And when you do that, you find that Shio and the Nailsmith are sharing a meal together or sharing a painting together. And you receive the achievement, Happy Couple. And so that's our goal for today. Uh, now, this is a very interesting task. Uh, we are using a rule set that is uh, slightly less glitchy than the usual rule set I'm using. So we're not going to have a bunch of WCS in this run. And we also don't have access to some things like inventory drops in the middle of the air. We have to only inventory drop off the edges. But the other thing that's interesting about this run is that we're going to do it with two players. That prior movement was the same for both, but now the two are splitting off. And now we have Alice in the main view, who is going to pick up Fury, while Bob, meanwhile, is heading toward the bench in Dirtmouth. So Alice is going to go ahead and pick it up, and then as soon as she has it, Bob is able to equip Bob, of course, is going to try to get Dash as quickly as possible, because Dash beats everything up. Such a wonderful ability. In order to do that, first, Bob is going to make it uh, toward the boulder, and then is going to damage tank a little bit in order to do a fun little skip here. So normally the boulder, you need to get a spell like a Vengeful Spirit. However, by damage tanking off of the spit, it's possible to get close enough to the boulder to get a couple hits in. And with Fury, it takes fewer hits total. Alice is going to grab a little bit of Geo because we're going to have to buy a couple of stags here. And while Bob gets started with Green Path, Alice is going to head down and head through the Aspen Arena area. You've probably seen Aspid Arena in speedruns before, uh, but it has a fun little trick here where we can kill the first Aspid, and then we can wait for the next Aspids to spawn and use a spike to kill the other two. Very efficient, and we get all that Geo. Uh, again, because we, we want to buy uh, two different stags here. We're going to get the Crossroad stag, and we're also going to get the Green Path stag. And the main reason we need those is we're going to be having to travel around quite a bit once we get Dash to get the various grubs we need. We're going to use Eric, our helpful squid here, to help give us a boost up and avoid having to go all the way around down below. Using lots of nail knockback as you've seen previously in this task and probably in some other tasks. You give little boosts forward. We do a little static slash boost up there, which is that knockback off of the uh, little moss thing. And then Bob is making his way up to the moss knight, which we need to pass through on the way and is also a nice convenient source of geo. With Fury, this fight is pretty quick. Now, meanwhile, Alice is going to take care of Grossmother. Ultimately, Alice's goal here is to head across Blue Lake to Resting Grounds. Now, normally you would do that um, with a Shade Skip using Claw and Vengeful Spirit in a human run, but uh, we don't need that. Instead, we can do what's known as Itemless Blue Lake. So Alice is going to come down here. We're going to die to set up the Shade. Now, while that's happening, Bob is almost a hornet, but first Bob is going to go ahead and buy the green path stack. We're going to come back here later to finish off some grubs and also for hitting Shio. We're not going to take the bench, though, because we're going to uh, quit out all the way back to Dirtbus. Uh, you might notice that Alice actually has negative 140 Geo right now. Uh, that's because her shade is out. And so the shade actually has the geo. Just a little funny artifact of syncing the geo between the two. And that's the itemless shade skip. Very precise little skip. Which, if it had been just maybe eight seconds later, 
they wouldn't have had dash for that skip. But had to do it itemless. But thankfully we get dash now, which is nice because splashing across blue lake without dash is quite slow. So Alice is able to head up towards resting grounds now. Our goal here is to get Dream Nail, and then we can head back down around the other way. Uh, you might wonder why we need Dream Nail since we're not getting any of the Dreamers for this run, but uh, this run actually does require a little bit of essence, and that's because we need the Pale Ore from the Seer. So while Alice is busy doing Dream Nail, Bob is grabbing a couple of grubs. Bob's ultimate goal here is to head down to Claw. But Dream Nail takes a while, so Bob has time to go ahead and clean up these grubs on the way. Because we're not really going to want to come back here later. Uh, that gome is very annoying. It gets in the way. We do a little trick here in the acid room. Uh, by hitting the grub and then falling into the acid, we warp back to the start of the room. Uh, if you go too far, then you'll hit a respawn trigger by the grub and you'll respawn on that platform. But as long as you stay back a little bit, you can respawn where you want to. Bob doesn't need to do Aspid Arena because Alice did it earlier, and instead can start heading straight to Fungal. The actual movement in Fungal is pretty standard, nothing real special here. Uh, we use some dashes, we use some setting slashes, lots of little mi miniature optimizations. And meanwhile, we're doing what's known as Seer Skip, where we get control early, and then we're able to continue moving during the animation of waking up. It takes quite a bit of time, actually. It's also very precise and tricky to do. So now, Alice is making her way down to City. Meanwhile, Bob is finishing up in Fungal. Now, normally in Fungal, you would go straight to Claw using a trick called Epogo, but we're not going to do that. Bob instead is going to grab Dash Master first. And this is mainly because we're going to want to go to Deep Nest next, so it makes sense to grab it first. And Dash Master is a very useful charm, uh, particularly for tasks because it allows us to do some very precise movement in combat, uh, but it also just speeds up a lot of movement throughout the course of the run. So we're grabbing Red a bench, and then uh, you might notice that Alice is grabbing a King Station bench. So Alice is going to go take a quick little detour here to get a grub. You might wonder why we don't get this uh, later, but the timing actually works out nicely here because Bob is able to quit out and immediately equip Dash Master, and then Alice is also able to quit out and immediately equip Dash Master. Bob now makes his way up to Claw, working around the mantises. Alice had to do a little pogo there to get up, uh, since she doesn't have Claw yet. And because she doesn't have Claw yet, she's going to take a quick detour and fight Gorgeous Husk. Uh, the Geo from Gorgeous Husk is going to be used to buy a mail upgrade, which is going to be helpful because we're going to have to fight a couple of different bosses with uh, Nail 1 as well as the start of the first Colosseum with only Nail 1. So uh, getting that Nail upgrade is well worth it. Meanwhile, Bob is starting to make his way to Deep Nest. There's a fun little spot here where we need to get a grub that we call Bouncy Grub. Normally you use VS to clear these guys out, but it's possible to just dash through and dodge them. Alice is well on her way to getting the nail upgrade. And Bob is almost deep nest, but first he's gonna grab a grub.
Now that Alice has the nail upgrade, she can start working her way over to Sanctum to pick up Dive. We're gonna need Dive because we want to get into Crystal Peak. Um, and it's also just a decent piece of damage spell. That and there's a couple of dive lock drops. You can see there's a lot of interesting movement here with down dash. As well as this guy. Normally this would be a double damage tank to get past that guard piece, but it's so fast that Task can just do one damage tank, but then has to damage tank the next one because they move too quickly and beat the cycle. So it's an interesting little trade-off there. Alice is heading into Sanctum now, having just completed the DLC rooms, with a quick stop over to get a grub here. And then the Sanctum entrance fight with Nail 1 goes pretty fast. Thankfully we got Fury and Nail 1. Uh, again, because we're following uh, latest patch rules, even though we're on 1-2-2-1 for technical reasons, we're going to go ahead and go the long way around rather than doing a lever skip. And in particular, that means we get to fight Norman. Norman 1's not too difficult, but um, we can make pretty quick work of him. You might notice that Bob is in the dark. Um, for your viewing convenience, I've gone ahead and lit up the room uh, with a uh, night vision goggles type effect. And that way you can see what's going on there. Uh, Bob is having to go through a bunch of big dark rooms to pick up the grubs. Right now it's in the largest dark room that has to kind of sneak around. While Alice is heading to Soul Master. Soul Master is an interesting fight. Uh, Nail One Fury makes it pretty fast, but first we're going to do an early control. Alice healed up to 3 HP so that she can take two hits there, and then gets control due to being in a respawn when the stream started. And from there, we're able to use uh, down dashes and side dashes to keep up pretty consistent hits, and that is phase one complete. Now meanwhile, Bob has been heading to Galeon. Galeon we need to get some essence from because we're going to need to get the Seer Orb. And so we grab this on the way to Trenton's. Of course, while we're doing the Galeon fight, we're also doing Phase 2 of Soul Master. Um, phase 2 of Soul Master is pretty quick, but the Galeon fight is quite interesting because there's lots of things to dodge and dashes that just do some fun movement. Now that we have completed Galeon, Bob is able to start heading towards Trampass. Trampass is going to give Bob access to Basin as well as the lower part of Kingdom's Edge. Uh, and so Bob is kind of going to do the low route and get all those grubs down there, while uh, Alice is going to head to Crystal Peak and take care of that stuff. We do grab the Geo Chest here because we're going to need a bunch of Geo later to buy uh, the Nail Upgrades. And in particular, we want to get Nail 3 before completing all of uh, Call of 2 and the uh, Grubfather Geo. We had to do a little bit of Pogo in there because we couldn't get the second face dive, but fake dive, but that was a fun little segment, so it was worth it anyways. So we make our way through the Sanctum Escape. And now Bob is going to have to tackle Noss. We do a little skip here across the ceiling to get to the entrance to Nosk. And then now we're gonna make our way through these tunnels using a lot of down dashes to accelerate our way through. Lots of funny movement through these tunnels. Normally you'd use C dash, but Dash Master is still pretty quick. heads to Nosk, Alice is heading to storerooms. She's going to grab the stag there, and that stag station is going to be useful later, uh, and also gives us a good place to quit out to the crossroads stag, which is going to be our uh, entrance to Crystal Peak area. And now Bob is going to fight Nosk. Uh, Nosk is a very annoying boss, particularly if you're fighting this human, because Nosk can climb up into the ceiling and drop things on you. Uh, but Task doesn't have to worry about that. We just manipulate the multiverse so that doesn't happen. Yeah. 
The nice thing with Dashmaster here is that you can keep up with Nos while they're charging and just continually uh, pogo. And then we use the dive to get iframes whenever Nosk is going to do like a spray type attack. And so Nosk is done. Alice is grabbing a quick grub here. This is the spike grub and it can respawn at the start of the room. And then Alice is going to come back up and do the uh, a couple more grubs. There's one in the room uh, just adjacent to False Knight here. We'll grab this one. And then we're also going to head up and grab Garden Grub on the way to Crystal Peak. Meanwhile, Bob is making his way over to the tram. The dash over this guy is actually quite precise. It's very easy to get hit there. So Alice can start making her way into Crystal Peak here. Use a couple of background pogos for swag. And now Bob is going to go ahead and take that bench and then take care of stuff in Basin. The Basin has a couple of things we want. There's a grub. And then there is also a pale ore down here. But the grub is dive locked. I'm going to go ahead and sneak in and grab that. And then we make our way around. Uh, we can do Pog X here briefly. And then while Alice makes her way through this uh, little spike gauntlet, Bob finishes off the Mollocks there. And then grabs the orb. And then we can quit back to the train. Alice goes through Dog Cycle Room. Uh, normally it's called God Cycle Room, but we do a slight reversed version of it that's a little bit faster for task. And then here, Alice is going to grab this King's Idol using background pogo. This is a uh, very easy idol to get, and we're going to use this Geo to help buy Nail 3 a little bit earlier. And now Alice is going to fight the Crystal Guardian. So we're going to use the Geo from this fight, but primarily we're doing this for the bench. Uh, because we need to go a couple different places after getting uh, C Dash, uh, this is going to be a nice central bench to work from. Uh, meanwhile, Bob is starting up through Kingdom's Edge uh, and is going to grab the exterior hive grub uh, using Dash Master to do the skip there rather than using C Dash since we don't have it yet. And then we have to use Dash Master again to get back. Alice, meanwhile, is just doing standard uh, Crystal Peak movement. Gonna start going through the laser cycle here shortly. Meanwhile, Bob is quickly making his way through Kingdom's Edge, doing a little bit of hopper avoidance on the way. We're gonna grab a quick rub here in Kingdom's Edge before heading up to the Colosseum. Alice now is in the process of grabbing the Crystal Dash. Bob is now able to use to get out slightly faster. And now Bob starts climbing up to get to the Colosseum of Fools. Alice is going to grab the uh, C Dash drop here. And then also the Crusher drop. his way awkwardly up to the room, not able to use wings, but still able to make pretty good time. Alice now is going to head down towards D-Dark. There's a grub in there, and D-Dark is also useful as a spell, uh, since we're going to be doing Kalos soon, and uh, we only have Nail 1 Fury and regular dive for right? So having D-Dark is going to give a nice damage boost, but we're not going to have it right away. Uh, again, we got a little dark room here, but Tass has no trouble with the dark rooms. So while Alice is headed towards D Dark, Bob is headed into the first Colosseum of Fools. Mm -hmm. 
You can see that with Dive and Nail One Fury, they still dive reasonably quickly, but things in here do have a lot of health. So, um, at least initially, the fights here are going to be kind of slow, especially these boulders. They take a lot of hits with Nail One Fury. Um, here we have to kind of corral the boulders to get them all to come together, uh, use the dive to finish those off, and then we can use D-Dark on these ones. Build them even faster. Now we got D-Dark, so things are going to go a bit quicker. It does quite a bit more damage. Down dash is a nice way to deal with uh, going too high from Pogos. Uh, here we've used some D-Darts to kill them just because we have the soul and Poker. Uh, we did zero there. Uh, Bruce little interlude during the call. Uh, that gives us the last soul or essence that we need rather to get the uh, zero ore. And so Alice is going to grab the ore and then head around um, eventually to buy the nail free upgrade. Meanwhile, Bob is finishing up with Kalos. Thankfully, Venge Flaking is pretty quick. We don't have uh, Shade Soul, but uh, we can just use it with Pogos. And with Fury, it's actually pretty quick. So now Alice is going to start heading down the city, uh, stopping by Crips on the way because there's a ground in there. Bob just keeps slashing into dark things. Usually, um, these fights would be using Shade Soul, which is significantly more efficient. Uh, but the detour to get Shade Soul would just take too long. So we make do with Nail. And awkwardly try to get these D-Dark hits in where we can. Gross moms go pretty quickly. Alice takes care of a couple of city guards on the way to nail. So we grab that one, and then we're also going to grab the one over near Watcher Nights. Now, because we're using latest patch rules, uh, we're not going to be able to do the lever skip, but it doesn't take too long to make our way around the proper way. We've RNG manipulated so that guy's on the correct side. And then we just use D-Dark to fill the surgery pretty quickly. Now we're starting Hollow 2, but we're still on Nail Wing Fury, so you might notice that these winged sentries take a lot of hits. That's not ideal. But thankfully, Alice is going to be heading to Nail Tree. It's going to take a little bit of time to get there, uh, but we will get it in time for uh, some of the more difficult parts of Hollow 2, including the Hobble Zalb levels, which take a lot of time if you're only on Nail One Fury. Notably, we can't really use D Dark here very well because so many of the enemies are in the air. It's a lot more awkward to use it. We're down here. So we're selling the Lem here. Um, this is to get us the Geo that we need for the nail upgrade. Uh, conveniently, this routing also means that we don't need to sell the Lem later. So that one sale is enough. Hoppers are also an awkward part with only nail one. But not too bad. These we can at least use D-Dark against fairly effectively. But now we're gonna have some nail upgrades. So we have nail two for this hopper. And then 
for this next enemy. Not a crop, but a mimic. We have nail three, and it dies very quickly. Now these uh, sentries only take three hits, which makes them die substantially more quickly. And those squits only take two hits. So Alice, you might notice, was able to put out to Siege the Bench, which is why we took it, and then is heading up towards Crown. There's a grub up here, and we also need the Crown Pale Orb. Bob is then doing the floorless section. It's very close to spikes there. Now one thing um, fun that Alice is doing here is Alice is going to uh, do a little skip with this background object to get up there with that little go all the way around. Meanwhile, Bob is taking care of all this which only take a couple of hits with Nail 3. So it's not too bad. Just a couple more obbles to go, and then we got the obbles. So, funny thing about obbles, normally you have to kill one, and then the other will go into a second phase and gain additional health. However, if you kill them both on the same frame, they don't go to a second phase. That saves quite a bit of time, but it's actually very tricky to arrange um, if you're playing as a human, because you have to be able to count exactly how much damage they're taking. We got the order, and now we're going to dash out. Uh, we don't actually need a bunch of extra Geo here, because we're going to get plenty of Geo from Chrome Father. Speaking of which, Alice has quit back to CG and is now headed to the Grubfather area. Uh, she's gonna take a quick stop to grab a uh, grub. While Bob is headed towards the uh, Kingdom Station, or King Station, Stag Station. Doing a little dance there to activate Insta Bell. That's actually slightly faster than the look down, and we can't use look down because we have fury, so that little instable technique is quite fun. Um, Alice is able to head over here. Uh, Bob took a quick detour to make sure that that door will be open for Alice when she comes back later. But first, she is going to head to Grubfather. Now, Grubfather takes an eternity to finish giving all the rewards. So, in order to do things efficiently, Bob is going to be grabbing grubs while Alice is still waiting for the Grubfather rewards. Thankfully, there are enough grubs in Green Path that this works out pretty well as far as timing. There's some fun little C dashes we can use through here. Well, some down dashes. What's the fun movement for here? So, uh, one thing you'll notice here too is we're going to grab this grub, and some of these grubs we've actually gotten uh, after entering the room, so Alice is going to leave the room and go back in to start collecting the rewards for the grubs that um, Bob just got. However, there is one more grub still, and this grub we don't have yet, so Alice is going to have to wait a little bit. Ideally, things would have lined up so that she didn't have to wait at all, but there's only so much you can do when you're coordinating these things. Thankfully, it doesn't take too long. Bob is able to have it over and hit the grub, and then Alice is immediately going to come in and get a pale ore with no bounces. Just have to manipulate reality, make sure it doesn't bounce. Easy peasy. 
So Bob now is gonna hit the Shio. We go to Shio first rather than the Nailsmith because we're also going to need to buy Great Slash, which takes a little bit of time. So this ends up being the more efficient ordering. The fun little gauntlet that Bob has to make his way through. And meanwhile, Alice is starting from storerooms and then is heading down to the Nailsmith. Cheeky little inventory drop there. We can't go the right way around because we can't use wings, um, but still pretty quick. And now we can get the Great Slash, which is an important requirement. Quack, did you know this run has a different ending? A faster ending? One that honors the last wish of an old man? Click the link. You know you want to. weird. Uh, I'm sure you didn't click the link. So yeah, let's continue. Uh, now Alice is heading to the Nailsmith. And as soon as Alice gets nail four, we'll be primed uh, and prepped run, for Bob to sit on the bench and then head in and complete the run. The achievement is triggered as soon as Bob talks to the Nailsmith. And that's it. That's happy couple. I hope you've enjoyed this run. I had a lot of fun making it, and I'm looking forward to making more fun, goofy test runs in the future. Thank you, everybody, for your support, and have a good day.